Hello and welcome in to the 2023 Eastern Hello and welcome in to the 2023 Eastern Florida State College JUCO shootout. My name is Christian Oposo alongside my co-host Skylar Blaine. Skylar, nice to see you, bud. Hey, you're looking great, my brother. You're looking real spiffy, man. I like I like the digs. I like the digs. <laughs> you as well, my dude. We have a pretty good slate of games for you this weekend, but start off with Northwest Florida ranked number one in Florida Southwestern coming into this game. So Northwest Florida is coming off a loss to Daytona State right now, so they're looking for some amends, trying to get back into the winning column. They got 12 guys on their team, Christian, out of the 14 on the current roster that either have offers or a, a commitments to go to a D1 school. You mentioned those guys with offers or commitments to the Division I school. The competition at just JUCO level is so overlooked. Describe that to me, and what is it really like in this tournament? Well, you can make the argument that JUCO in the state of Florida, in terms of competition, is one of the best in the country. It rivals with Texas, it rivals with Kansas. These guys get up and down the floor. They pass very well, high basketball IQ. They attack the rim, and they can shoot at a very high percentage. And most of these coaches, they're already talking to these players. Most of these players already kind of have a feel of where they're going. The coaches see the stats. That's what they're not looking for here today. What exactly are they looking for? So Division One scouts want to fill a need whether that's within the, the front court, the back court, they don't just come looking for the best player to ever touch the basketball court. They need to fill a need. Also within the need, they need to fill a, a character role. They need leadership roles. They need to see how these players are going to react to adversity and to see how they're going to react in a big-time showcase where they can actually show off their skills and what they can do individually, but more importantly, uh, Christian, what they can do in a team environment. And we mentioned Northwest Florida comes in at rank number one. What do they do so efficiently that has them ranked as the top school in the country? They can play in the half court. They can play in the full court. They have guys that can shoot. They have guys that can rebound. They have guys that can get after uh, people on the ball. They, can get, they have guys that can get after you off the ball. Northwest can do it all. But don't sleep on Florida Southwestern right now. They have some big players, big, gu big guards, big, uh, big forwards, big centers, they're going to attack the paint and they're going to grab rebounds and they will get second chance opportunities. Florida Southwestern needs to, well, they've played this team three different times and every single time it's been decided by one basket. Who do you have in this game? And well, we're going to have to send it down to the national anthem for Brandon Ferguson, Chris King on the call on the other side of the anthem. Thank you very much.
Hello and welcome into the 22nd annual Eastern Florida State College men's basketball shootout. I'm Chris King alongside my broadcast partner, Brandon Ferguson from the Dan Patrick School of Sportscasting. Huge thank you to Eastern Florida State College for allowing us to be a part of this. We've got a jam-packed weekend, eight games, six teams, and a huge JUCO showcase here in Melbourne, Florida. Yes, Chris, Northwest Florida coming in at rank number one, suffered their first loss of the season after going on a 10-game win streak, and that loss was against Daytona State College in a game where they had 14 turnovers. And Coach DeMeo did told us that his team needs to play a more physical brand of basketball to get back to their winning ways. Yeah, Coach Steve DeMeo, a national champion for this Northwest Florida team, and then on the opposite side for Florida Southwestern, Eric Murphy. He's new, fairly new, a couple seasons under his belt, but already a couple final fours for this Florida Southwestern club. And this should be a great matchup to start us off. And then at 2 p.m., it's Gulf Coast State College versus Eastern Florida State College. The home Titans looking to get back active in this home sh JUCO shootout. And then on Sunday, Northwest Florida State College plays again versus Hillsborough Community College and then Gulf Coast State once again, and then to round us off, they'll play St. Petersburg College. Now, Brandon, what are you looking forward to so far in this tournament when you look at the stat sheets, when you look at this huge matchup between the number one ranked team in the country? It's hard not to see what Tahuan Te Simpkins is doing. He's, aver he's shooting 45% from three and dropped 44 earlier this season and averaging 15 points. Oh, and on the other side, you have Florida Southwestern with an electric freshman. Northwest Florida State Raiders in the whites. The Florida Southwestern Buccaneers in the purple. So your starting lineups here is number zero, Tyrone, Tyrone Baker for Florida Southwestern. He'll do the tip. And then it's Evans Paul, A.J. Hopkins, Jay Sean Thomas, and Carmani Gregory. So the tip is up and into the hands of Florida Southwestern. A big lob and a big jam to start us off. That's why it's the Juco shootout. We've got big dunks and Tyrone Baker, the transfer from Georgia and Dayton gets us started. 2-0 Florida Southwestern. In the whites, it's the number one ranked team in America in junior college. Tavion Banks with the ball, spins. Working. Missed it and it Tipped around, out of bounds. It will stay with the Northwest Florida State Raiders. So off of that tip, you see a lob in transition. How about the pace of play so far in this matchup? I mean, two seconds into this game, already a lob from half court. A beautiful athletic play off the backboard catching that. And now the defense is unbelievable for Florida Southwestern as they force a jump ball. And they only give up 59 points per game. So this is something that they are going to want to do force turnovers and force traps, though this one stays with the Northwest Florida State Raiders. Tawan Simpkins lost handle of it, but he's their big guy, 45% from three. He gets it down in to Jaden Schreider, and he missed it. Rebound, Baker. Looking for a foul there, Jaden Schreider on that layup attempt. Jayshon Thomas working the two-man with Baker. He's got hops, just dunked that one. Here's Paul, left-handed good. Both teams getting down low and a lot of physical physical play early from these two. Quick 4-0 lead for the Florida Southwestern Bucks and the answer, Taewon Simpkins, the Brooklyn native and look, Brooklyn, New York. They produce so many good point guards. We've seen it in Kemba Walker, and we've seen it in multiple other NBA guards. And Taewon Simpkins, he might just be the next guy to get to that next level. You see his beautiful jab step into a mid-range jumper. And then on the other end now, an illegal screen by Florida Southwestern. And now the Raiders ball. Jamal Sumlin transferred from UTEP. Cleveland, Ohio native. Puts up about 8.8 .8 points per game in that second guard role. And now the Buccaneers are in a, looks like a high, oh, back to a 2-3 zone for the Buccaneers. Taewon Simpkins, isoing. Gets it into Scheider, he had it knocked away. It stays with the Raiders. The turnaround, what a move and a finish from Jamal Sumlin. 
up and under. Beautiful move there from the redshirt freshman. Half court press here for the Raiders. 4-4, four, four. Evans Paul setting the screen. Jay Sean Thomas passed it into Paul and he got fouled. And Evans Paul already putting in work on the offensive side here just, th just two minutes in to game time in Eastern Florida State College. Evans Paul just a red shirt freshman putting up 9.3 points per game. Lefty out of Naples, Florida, drills the first one. And that gives Florida Southwestern their lead once again. They had a 4-0 lead, jumped out to a quick start, was playing fast, and now they have kind of settled in as it was a tie game at four. And the pace of play here early has been what Christian and Skyler were referring to. A lot of players having D1, uh, you know, already committed to certain D1s and offers, and this is exactly why from watching this physical and fast play early. Simpkins, the handoff to Jamal Sumlin. Good back screen for the Raiders. Simpkins passes it over to Schreider, who had it knocked away. Showtime, what do you got? Baker with the slam. Baker. Good steal, good defense leads to good offense, and Tyrone Baker slamming it home. Tyrone Baker, like I mentioned, transferred to Dayton from Georgia, and then things just didn't work out. He was slated to red shirt for the Flyers, and ultimately playing behind Wooden Award candidate Deron Holmes for the Dayton Flyers. There wasn't many minutes, so he ends up here, and he's found a good home. Eight to four the score. The Florida Southwestern Buccaneers lead it. 16 minutes and 55 seconds to go. And the Raiders playing man defense. Good trap in the corner, going back to their mans. Good rotation. Jay Sean Thomas had it knocked away. The steal, Tavion Banks goes up, is fouled. A.J. Hopkins did a good job of preventing the easy layup off of the turnover. Into the line now for the Raiders. Tavion Banks, 6'7", sophomore from Kansas City, Missouri. 61.9% from the line for Tavion. Banks goes in and out, so eight to four early, and you know maybe a little bit of nerves with this big event, and a couple of turnovers have led to some runouts for the Florida Southwestern Buccaneers, and they lead it eight to five after Tavion Banks splits a pair at the line. And we're going to sort of keep drawing at, and we have a half court, a half court trap here from the from the Raiders causing a a foul on. To Juan Simpkins. That's Taewon Simpkins' first foul. Two fouls apiece on every on each team in this game so far. We'll readjustment from the shot clock from one of our referees here. And look, this is such a big event in Melbourne, Florida. We had last year, I know in the 21st annual JUCO shootout, we had coaches from everywhere. We had Texas A&M, Corpus Christi. We had Cleveland State, Jermaine Henderson. We had multiple Division I coaches, and they're here to see a proven product. And a proven product they're seeing thus far, and intense defense from the Raiders. Not too much defense for Evans Paul getting on the board again early here. And that's just the effort from Evans Paul there, just back cutting and getting the wide open look. Here's Taewon Simpkins trying to respond. He dribbled it off his foot. Another turnover for the number one Juco team in the nation. And forced by Evans Paul, doing it on both ends. And Brandon, I want you to talk a little bit about how hard it is for a big guy to go step out and guard a, a point guard like Taewon Simpkins who can really drive it. And travel called, but yeah, big man going out to guard a uh, smaller guard. They have the speed advantage. They have the quickness. They have all those things to make the defender a big man. You got to move your feet. You got to play better defense than you would on a center, especially if you're out there on an island with a smaller guard trying to get past you. And good de defense there besides the, the height advantage, good defense there for Evans Paul. Here's 
Sumlin takes the screen. Fayoglu, they swing it in the corner for Rasheed Jones. Back to Fayoglu, buries it. Good spot up three from Fayoglu, the freshman from Istanbul, Turkey. Another thing that stands out to me about JUCO is if they've really gone global. We have a ton of international players in this event, and they really put on a show. And we've seen an increase of international players in college basketball as of late. That goes hand in hand with the international presence in the NBA, and everything trickles down. Jason Thomas, Baker, two seconds on the shot clock. The lob and the dunk. Evans Paul, as the shot clock expired, he got it in. Tyrone Baker with a great quick cross crossover there, leading to that open lob from Evans Paul. Rasheed Jones to Sumlin, working on the block. F.A. Oglu fighting, double teamed. Good. Lost it and stolen. Good defense from the Buccaneers, trapping Florida on everything. In transition. Slowing down now for the Buccaneers. Florida Southwestern takes the screen. That's Desrick Lindsay. Stolen. Rasheed Jones. He come up shaking on that steal. Sure, if it's a hand for Rasheed Jones or an ankle. Still grimacing at his right leg. They'll play on. F.A. Oglu left handed layup. Good. Beautiful pass that time. Tyrone Bra Baker is creating everything. Offense for the Raiders right now. He's driving in, he's dishing out as we have the coaching staff for the Raiders yelling out defense. 12 to 10, 14 minutes to go in this first half. A three try, A.J. Hopkins, too strong. Here come the Northwest Florida Raiders. And it'll be a dead ball timeout. From Melbourne, Florida and Eastern Florida State College, you're following the 22nd annual Florida College men's basketball shootout. There's a timeout on the floor. In the lead is the Florida Southwestern Bucks over the number one ranked team in junior college, Northwest Florida State Raiders, 12 to 10. This is the 22nd annual Florida College men's basketball shootout. Build a successful career with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. You can choose from nearly 25 tracks in today's top job fields of business, healthcare, and computer technologies, with classes tailored to meet your needs on campus and online. A bright future awaits you with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. To learn more, visit easternflorida.edu slash go slash bachelors. Eastern Florida State College has a two-year aerospace technology degree. We are the only school in the state of Florida that offers this degree. The program is taught by industry professionals. Welcome All back to Eastern Florida State College in Melbourne, Florida, and the 22nd JUCO shootout. The program I'm Chris King, was part of my broadcast for partner, years. Brandon Ferguson. So you're not getting the just somebody that has a degree that's teaching you casting. Big thank stuff you to about Eastern aerospace. Florida State you're learning from people that actually us to be a part of this in the aerospace field or currently in the aerospace field and it hasn't disappointed so far, Brandon. 12 to 10 is the score. Florida Southwestern going for the upset over the number one team in the country. Going for the upset in the way Evans Paul has been setting this tone with his athletic play on offense and defense. They have a, on a good track to upset the number one team. Tyrone Baker gets it to Desdrick Lindsay. Step back, butter. That's just ISO play. One on one, man in your face, and just still make the shot over him. 14 to 10. Their biggest lead is four, it's back to it. And a layup, Tavion Banks, quick answer. He's been big, passing out of the post as well as driving inside. Tavion Banks has shown some good ability. Good Euro step against Florida Southwestern's defense. A lot of the prototypical college four men in this game. You've got Tyrone Baker, he's already played at the Division I level. Tavion Banks, 6'7", 225, can score it. So just a thing to keep an eye on for both teams. Good ball move Seven here for seconds the Buccaneers. left on the shot clock. Short, batted around, and it is Northwest Florida State College's ball. They lead by two, 12.47 to go in this first half. 
What do you think has led to the Florida Southwestern Buccaneers being able to jump out to a lead so far? What have they done in particular that makes you think that, that they can handle this big Northwest Florida State Raiders team? Well, they've played defense, first of all. They're not, they're not scared of the Raiders, even though they're the number one ranked team. And on offense, they're moving, moving the ball around efficiently and effectively and creating open shots and good timely drives here as a huge block from Reese Jones from F. Florida Oglu. Southwestern. F.A. Oglu, leading scorer for the Raiders. They get it to Simpkins. He missed it. The tip is good. Jaden Schreider. Good put back there from a 6'7 sophomore. 14 all. Tyrone Baker, Mitty. Tyrone Baker found a soft spot in the zone. A little miss Mitty, but as we have a turnover here for the Buccaneers. Tyrone Baker gets it to the cutting man and a foul called. Jayshon Thomas got it off of the steal. Passed it to Baker and he got it back to him. He'll head to the line for two shots. We, we've only seen about two or three outside, sh outside shots all game from either team. And a lot of, a lot of this game is gonna be won and lost by in the paint on offense and defense. Both teams like to get up and down. They like to force turnovers, and that's what this is all about. Showcase the athleticism. We've seen it so far today, even off of the first, off of the tip off. They had a two second dunk already by Tyrone Baker. So this is what you will see all weekend. High flyers and dunks and transition fast breaks. It'll be showtime all weekend. And Jay Sean Thompson, Thomas here, excuse me, at the line, 86% free throw shooter on the year. Full court press here Florida for South the Buccaneers. Florida Southwestern regains the lead. They've had trouble with that full court press. Here comes the trap. They passed it out. Simpkins had it. F.A. Oglu controls the tip. 16-14, your score here at Eastern Florida State College. It's Tyrese Elliott working off the drive. It was guarded by Baker. Step back, Simpkins airballed it. Shot clock violation. Strong defensive stand from the Buccaneers. They're hooping. Good move by Tawan Simpkins. Got the shot he wanted, but with that airball, couldn't quite finish. As Coach DeMeo is really wanting his players to full court press here, and they do. Both of these coaches have transcended programs, both getting NBA players into the league. Chris Duarte went to Northwest Florida State and then Keon Ellis for Florida Southwestern. I mean, this is the new age of junior college basketball. They are getting players into the NBA and they're doing it well. Tyrone Baker with the shot clock winding down. Wide right, rebound to the Raiders in transition. A layup is good for Tyrese Elliott. 16-16, we're knotted up again. Good finish from Elliott over A.J. Hopkins, a 6-7 forward, finishing that, a guard finishing over a forward. Good lay in there for Florida Southwestern. Hopkins got it to Thomas. In the corner, back to Hopkins. Seven seconds left on the shot clock. They got to go. Tyrone Baker kicks it. Cole Franklin couldn't get the friendly roll, and it is rebounded by the Raiders of Northwest Florida State in transition. Once again, takes the bump. Missed it, but two free throws coming from Tyrese Elliott. He just scored in transition, and he's working it after some long rebounds and getting out there and running. And that last offensive possession for... Florida Southwestern. They have their two big men down low in the short corners and just passing around the perimeter for their guards, trying to get any look uh, down low for Tyrone Baker. Couldn't quite get, get it there and a missed perimeter shot resulting in the Northwest Florida good defense. The Northwest Florida State Raiders finally reclaim the lead 17-16. And Trey Brown substituting in for the Northwest Florida Raiders. Baker skies in for the rebound. A narrow one point lead here at the 2023 Eastern Florida State College Juco shootout. 
Florida Southwestern Buccaneers trailing. Raiders switching everything up top with all the guards. Tyrese Elliott down after trying to jump a pass, got a hard collision there with one of the Southwestern Florida players. That'll be the fourth foul on the Northwest Florida State Raiders. But they lead 17 to 16. You're watching the 22nd annual Florida College Juco shootout from Eastern Florida State and Titan Fieldhouse in Melbourne, Florida. The Northwest Florida State Raiders lead at 17 to 16 over the Florida Southwestern Buccaneers. I'm Chris King alongside Brandon Ferguson for the Dan Patrick School of Sportscasting. We'll be right back. Florida State College has a two-year aerospace technology degree. We are the only school in the state of Florida that offers this degree. The program is taught by industry professionals. All of the instructors are currently employed or previously employed at NASA. The program manager was part of NASA for 35 years. So you're not getting just somebody that has a degree that's teaching you stuff about aerospace. You're learning from people that actually worked in the aerospace field or currently working in the aerospace field. Welcome back to Eastern Florida State College in Melbourne, Florida, the 22nd JUCO shootout. The Northwest Florida State Raiders on top, 17 to 16 here early. 9.53 in this first half left. And the Buccaneers trying to reclaim the lead. They had as big of a lead as four, but ultimately some turnovers and some transition buckets allowed the Raiders to come back and, and take the lead. Tyrone Baker. Up at the top of the key, he gets it to Cole Franklin. Step back three, that won't go. And a foul, a foul called on the Raiders. It's Trey Brown who... Tough foul call, the Raiders did not like that one. Cole Franklin now going to the line for three, but good defense that whole possession until that, that late foul, which now gives the freshman from Texas three free throws. Cole Franklin just threw up a prayer and it was answered. I mean, they had one second left on the shot clock when that went up and it still was, was a foul call on the Raiders of Northwest Florida. So one of two so far is Cole Franklin. And the Buccaneers don't get the full three, assuming he makes the second one. They don't get the full three, but 60% free throw shooter for Cole Franklin. And knocking down the third one, two or three for the line for Franklin. Just a 60% free throw shooter. Got two out of three there. And you love to see both teams full court pressing. Results in intense basketball on both ends. Rasheed Jones working on Baker. F.A. Oglu, the Turkey native. Taewon Simpkins, their leading scorer, the Brooklyn New York point guard, F.A. Oglu, he's already hit one three, instead drives it, it's blocked away. But it's rebounded, Simpkins. And a layup is good off of the second chance points. And, and Tyrone Baker's down, grabbing his left ankle. He just had a beautiful block. A and shot clock violation. Head coach Eric Murphy for the Florida Southwestern Buccaneers was on top of that. He was talking to the official and telling him, hey, the shot clock didn't go off. And obviously the ball didn't hit the rim. He was swatted away by two Buccaneers. No it was F.A. Oglu. And Tyrone Baker's getting subbed out for A.J. Hopkins as he's gimping and limping off that right ankle, it looks like. We'll keep an eye on him on their side of the bench. Tyrone Baker has been huge so far. Got four points, couple assists. Huge in opening up that offense for the Buccaneers. Cole Franklin just got fouled on a three. He kicks a three try. Jay Sean Thomas missed it. It's tipped around. Offensive rebound, the Buccaneers. A.J. Hopkins, he can shoot it. 
Not that time. Taewon Simpkins controls. And the Raiders have an opportunity to regain the lead. Simpkins, the lefty. Oh, what a move. What a layup rising up. Equal height with the backboard, just throwing it up and over. Such a crafty the Raiders finish. A bucket. Such a crafty finish there by Taewon Simpkins. A foul on Karahan Efeoglu for Sending the Raiders. Desrick Lindsay to the line. He just had a huge block, or huge offensive rebound, excuse me, on that last uh, offensive possession for the Buccaneers. But now going to the line, 71% free throw shooter out of Louisville, Kentucky. First one's down, so back tied at 19. And I want to go back to that Taewon Simps Simpkins layup. He went on the left side of the, of the floor and kind of like jumped up and just put it down. I mean, that was a very crafty finish from the guard, and that's something you probably only see on Riker, on, on uh, excuse me, uh, in, in New York City when they, when they play in the parks and stuff like that. So those are huge. Almost a, jelly, experience. almost a jelly almost a jelly type layup. Jelly just type play. Dykeman is what I meant yes, to say. Yes, Dykeman, sir. that that that's the the park that they play at in New York City. 1919. Eight minutes to go in this first half. Good defense by the Bucks. Tavion Banks at the top of the key, driving. Almost traveled with it instead. The turnaround is good at the shot clock. What a shot from Tavion Banks. Turn around with a man in your face. And now on the defensive side with the poke. Raiders ball. Huge bucket by Tavion Banks and big defensive presence by the Raiders now. They try to increase their lead 2-5, no. Rasheed Jones with the miss there. Jones missed it, nice pass to Evans Paul. And a charge. Jaden Schreider there Offensive drawing the charge. It was a good, it was a good dump off, but his feet were set and he was not in the restricted area. That's gonna be a charge. Just huge by Jaden Schreider stepping in and making that play. Forcing another turnover allows the Northwest Florida State Raiders to try to increase their lead from two to, to even bigger. That would be their biggest lead of the game if they're able to score here. It's been a close contested game throughout this, this first half here. And when you, when you take a look at these teams' losses, they've really only been by three points, five points. And that, when they are playing high con competition, that's what happens. So every possession matters early, and you're seeing that right now. Every possession matters, and these players want every single possession, giving everything they have here. 21-19 Northwest Raiders lead Florida Southwestern. 7.05 left in this first half. The first game of eight. There's six teams playing in this Eastern Florida State College Juco shootout. Tavion Banks had that big shot on last possession. Tyrone Baker back into the game for the Buccaneers. Controls the rebound. He's in transition. Goes up. And another charge. Two straight charges for the Raiders, and you got to be frustrated if, if you're on the Buccaneers, and that's exactly what Tyrone Baker is right now, pleading his case to the referee. Both teams with six fouls. That's just Tyrone Baker's first, so he won't have to worry about great to any see, foul trouble. Great to see Baker in back in after he had went out for a little bit with that ankle issue. And we see that all the time with high flyers. They kind of jump a little awkwardly and they get up so high in the air that sometimes you just come down wrong and mm -hmm. glad to see him back in the game. Tavion Banks, he's been big down the stretch so far. 6.25 left on the clock. He missed a three. Tavion Banks unable to hit from three. No hesitation there, fighting down for the rebound secured by Florida Southwestern. Just one three-pointer made in this game. I mean, this is crazy from two junior college teams who, they've got a couple of shooters on this squad. You talk about Taewon Simpkins, 45% from three. You talk about A.J. Hopkins, 46% from three for the Buccaneers. And at the end of the day, these two teams are just out there battling. 
Yeah, but right now it's, it's the Buccaneers defense. The last three possessions they had is a quick pull-up jumper, no good. Evans Paul with the rebound. The last three possessions they had has been a two charges and a carry. So great three turnovers for us there for the Raiders. Go to Southwestern. Bakers wide open, pushes inside. Rebound to Florida Southwestern. Ball was batted out of bounds. It was secured by Lindsey, but poked out by Northwest Florida is Jamal Sumlin checking back in for the Raiders as Trey Brown checks out. So side, side out here for the Buccaneers. 21-19, Baker trying to even this score back up. He's got the smaller Simpkins on him. Instead kicks out to Hopkins. Evans Paul working on Scheider. And a blocking foul. Evans Paul put the shoulder right into Scheider, but he was still moving. Yeah, Scheider trying to get three charges and four possessions. That would have been a stat, but doesn't quite get, the, get that one. A block was called, but Scheider on, off, on, on offense, he's the Raiders screener and and all an offensive rebounder on defense. He's he's doing everything uh, out there, but called for a block there. So into the bonus goes Evans Paul, the seventh foul on the Raiders of Northwest Florida State. Scheider who had the blocking foul. Evans Paul knocks down a free throw. Fifty-five percent free throw shooter, Evans Paul, the electric redshirt freshman. And hasn't really looked like it today. He's three of three from the line and that lefty stroke, you know what they say about lefties, they can always mm -hmm. shoot. So even though the, the free throw percentage doesn't show it, it has today. Got 10 points on the night. And we have a tie ball game with 534 left here with the Raiders versus the Buccaneers. 21-21, five minutes, 32 seconds to go in this first half. The first game of the 2023 Eastern Florida State Junior College Shootout. And we are setting up a good one, 21-21. The Raiders slowing it down here. As we have a, a grab. It was an off the ball foul. We have a grab called, but they're the bonus, so one and one for Tavion Banks. Didn't quite see the foul there. I know the Raiders had two screeners there. Yeah, they were, looked like they were running a set and ultimately an off the ball foul. So Tavion Banks heads to the line, drills the first one. And the Raiders slowed it down. Before that foul was called, they were slowing it down relatively to what we have been seeing, fast you know, transition gameplay, but Raiders slowing it down and rewarded with two free throws. And both drop for Tavion Banks. He's the leading scorer for this Raiders squad. 23-21 the score. They regain the lead once again. Tyrese Elliott checking in for Tavion Simpkins. Ooh, the Raiders showing that press. Press and trap action. And it leaves a wide open. Number 20, and they call a foul, and Jaden Schreider cannot believe it, and nobody can believe it there on the Northwest bench. One up straight. From our angle, he got all ball, but they called a foul, and was that Evans Paul searching for a body there under the paint? No, no that was, that was Tyrone Evans Baker. Paul, Evans Paul went to the bench, so it looks like. So that was Reese Jones. Yeah, Reese Jones. 6'10", sophomore. Open. He was wide open, and. Florida Southwestern, they beat that press, and he was right under on the left block and had it blocked away. That gives Scheider his second foul, so obviously don't want to give him three before we head into halftime. He'll head to the bench, and Reese Jones. Especially for Scheider having two already. He's your, he, he's your, he's your machine. He's your, he's your muscle. So him having two fouls early, not ideal for the Raiders. Two for two from Reese Jones, the Maryland native. Knocks them both down, 23-23, back tied. 4.56 to go in this first half. Raiders back to slowing it down. They've got two screeners up top. Jamal Sumlin kicks corner. Rasheed Jones resets. Back to F.A. Oglu, he hit a three, steps in, tries a two and gets it. And that form is beautiful, beautiful head fake. 
got the defender running past him, step in for a mid-range pull-up jump shot. Effortless for Ifuaglu. He's up to seven points now. Jayshon Thomas driving, working on the double team. Gets it in, Desdrick Lindsay. Back to Thomas, behind the back, left-handed scoop. Just missed it. One missed for the everything. finish, maybe trying to draw a little contact and he did not get the contact that he was looking for. Media timeout. It'll take us to a media timeout, 25-23. The Northwest Florida State Raiders back on top here at Eastern Florida State College. From Melbourne, Florida and Eastern Florida State College, you're following the 22nd annual Florida College's men's basketball shootout. There's a timeout on the floor, four minutes, 13 seconds left. The Northwest Florida State Raiders lead it by two. This is the 22nd annual Florida College men's basketball shootout. Build a successful career with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. You can choose from nearly 25 tracks in today's top job fields of business, healthcare, and computer technologies with classes tailored to meet your needs on campus and online. A bright future awaits you with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. To learn more, visit easternflorida.edu slash go slash bachelors. back live from Eastern Florida State College in the 2023 JUCO shootout. I'm Chris King alongside Brandon Ferguson. Brandon, it's a 25-23 lead for the Northwest Florida State Raiders, the number one ranked team in junior college over the Florida Southwestern Buccaneers. What has led to them being able to get back into this game and finally climb to a two-point lead and have possession of the ball? Drawing fouls, they've just had two two big free throws, drawing fouls and and getting good uh, shots off uh, with good defense, so even better shots, better offense than defense. Good ball movement, Tavion Banks rebounded it. Three seconds left on the shot clock. F.A. Oglu missed, the tip is good. Soaring in for the Raiders is Tyrese Elliott, the sophomore from Grayson, Georgia. About six foot three getting up there on the putback over the big man. Largest lead of the game for the Raiders of Northwest Florida State. They'll look to increase, try to get a stop here. The Florida Southwestern Buccaneers. Good defense from the Raiders here. Tyrone Baker for three, buried it. Tyrone Baker Tyrone stepping Baker. out and knocking it down. Tyrone Baker has been all over the court. Inside and perimeter work right there. Tavion Banks had it in the corner, they get it to Sumlin, Sumlin, the push shot. Too short, rebound Baker, they've got numbers. Three on four. And Hard foul from Ifuaglu on, on Reese Jones. Reese Jones just had the huge block on the other side and trying to dunk it. Hard foul to the head there, he's going to the line. Yeah, good, good sportsmanship there by Effie Aglu checking on. Reese Jones making sure he was okay. A 2-3 zone we saw from uh, Florida Southwestern on that last possession leading to that Reese Jones block and then eventually this foul. 27-26 to 26 here, closely contested game. Just when the Raiders get their biggest lead, the Buccaneers always find, finding a way to get back and keep this game within three or four points. Reese Jones just made Two free throws a couple of possessions ago. Misses the first one. So now he has an opportunity to just tie it. But there's no quit in this Buccaneers team. They were just down four to the number one team in the country after it had been back and forth, after it started to feel like some momentum was going to the Raiders. And ultimately, they come back and Tyrone Baker hits a big three 
to just make it one, and then they get a stop, and then it's tied up again, 27-27. Yep, and Reese Jones hit those free throws, and he's going to be subbed out for Evans Paul, and also subbing, uh, subbing in Ahmad Sumaharo, guard, a freshman from Lawrenceville, Georgia, playing defense right now on Jamal Sumlin. So it's the Raiders of Northwest Florida with it. Nice back cut. Sumlin lays it in. Good backdoor cut. Tavion Banks has his, had his head up and seen the cutter right behind Sumaharo. The Buccaneers trail by two versus the Raiders. They're in the double bonus now, so if a foul is called on white, then it'll be two free throws automatically. Cole Driving Franklin inside, working. 13 seconds left on the shot clock. He missed it. Cole Franklin off the mark on the floater. In transition, Banks goes up to catch a body, and it'll be a foul called on Evans Paul. Yeah, Evans Paul is not about to let that slide. Everybody in the gym stood up when Tavion Banks took off, couldn't quite finish it, gets the foul called, and back to the line, he'll go. Your leading scorer for your Raiders, Tavion Banks. And Tavion Banks has been so huge. He's really an effort player for this Raiders squad, doing it all, offensive rebounds, nice passes out of the post, and finishing around the rim, and he tried to do it in a big way there. He's creating offense. It feels like, well, now that um, Tawan Simpkins subbed in, it feels like when he's not, when Tavion Banks is uh, on the court without Simpkins, he's their main, the offense runs, runs through him primarily, and he sets the tone for the Raiders, and he's been doing that all first half. The Kansas City, Missouri native Tavion Banks gets their lead back to four. Now here comes a dunk in transition from Rasheed Jones. Good trap by Jones and Simpkins. Good trap by Tomes and Simpkins leading to that dunk. Tyrone Baker threw it away. It was jumped in the passing lane by Sumlin. He knocked it out of bounds. The biggest lead so far for the Raiders is six, 33 to 27. A buck 39 left on in this first half. S six point game now. Bucks down six to the Northwest Raiders. On the inbound, it's stolen away. Rasheed Jones putting in work defensively. He's now trapped. Simpkins pushing it up. They get it into number one, Sumlin, who finishes high off the glass. And now Florida Southwestern needs a timeout. Sumlin has the Raiders, their biggest lead of the match, 35-27 over the Buccaneers of Florida Southwestern. Brandon, what led to them jumping out to that big of a lead after it was tied up at 27? Well, a quick trap resulting in a dunk, and then on the other end, uh, in another trap which uh, ended up into more offense. So it's really just defense, them playing solid defense against Florida Southwestern uh, leading to their offense. And Tawan Simpkins and Tavion Banks have been key for this Raiders offense in uh, capturing this lead against the Buccaneers. Yeah, and you talk about Banks and Simpkins and also we just saw Jamal Sumlin knock down a, a nice layup there on his end. What do you think having those, those experienced guards that have been to the Division I level and, and in Sumlin, he was at UTEP. Uh, what do you think that brings to this junior college event? It, it brings everything. It brings credibility. It brings skill. It brings it, it brings everything to this tournament. To have a bunch of D1 players running around and playing a high high tier brand of basketball. Simpkins doing his dance up and under, missed it. Baker, nice contest as well as Evans Paul. Simpkins looking for the foul, didn't get it. One minute left. In this first half, nice ball movement. Evans Paul missed it, got his own board, put it back up, he's fouled. Evans Paul is a grown man down there, working it on the offensive boards, and he'll head to line for two free throws. And Evans Paul averages just 9.3 uh, points a game, but he's already in double digits this game, already in the first half. Establishing dominance here in the first game of the Juco shootout. It's been really good from the stripe, too. 
Hit five free throws already in this one. And when you have a big man that yeah, he's even shooting, uh, shot an outside shot and can do all the stuff inside, but when it comes to the free throw line, that's where most big men struggle in. For Evans Paul, not a problem. His first miss from the free throw line, five of six for the big man. 35, 28, 48 seconds left. And right here, you got to be thinking two for one if you are the Raiders. And that's what someone's got a set coming here. Sumlin passes out Simpkins. He's got to travel. The official called on Sumlin. Before the pass out to an open shot, we got Reese Jones subbing back in. Evans Paul goes to the bench. So a quick timeout now, 38 seconds left in this first half, 35-28. It'll be the Florida Southwestern Buccaneers ball when we come back. And w once again, I'm Chris King alongside Brandon Ferguson for the Dan Patrick School of Sportscasting. Big thank you to Eastern Florida State for allowing us to headline this first game of multiple. We got four games, six teams. Later, later up today, 2 p.m., we got Gulf Coast State College versus Eastern Florida State, the host of this beautiful tournament here in Melbourne, Florida. Always good to see the home team getting out here and getting some run. The Titans are really good. They, they did lose a big scorer last year in, in Caleb Bird, but, I mean, this Eastern Florida State Titans program produces elite players as well as most of these junior colleges and the ones that are in this showcase as well. So, with 25 seconds left on the shot clock, Tavion Banks in transition, goes up, almost reversed it. Instead, Jones will punch it in, and it is a nine-point lead. Wow, Tavion Banks tried to get fancy. The biggest lead here for the Raiders. De beautiful defense here with five seconds to go in the first half. A.J. Hopkins turned it over, Sumlin, Full court heave, too strong. 37-28, a big close by the Raiders. They came out of that, that 30 second timeout having to play defense against this Buccaneers team. And what do they do? They force a turnover and they get an easy bucket. I mean, they were playing intense defense all this first half, but when it came to that last 30 seconds, two turnovers in under 30 seconds, I mean, what, what offense here, or what defense, excuse me, for Northwest leading to offense? And, and a little bit of up. urgency in the, in the tunnel now. Both yep. teams kind of went into the hallway, and yep. Coach DeMeo was looking. But now he stands by our Sydney Dick. So to Sydney, thank you for joining us. Here you go. Thank you, guys. And coach, what a great first half you guys are going up. You went on an 8-0 run at the end of that. How are you planning on keeping up the momentum in the second half of the game? I think we're going to trap a little more like we just did in the second half. I think they have a hard time handling pressure, so we're going to, we're going to go in with a lot of half-court traps. Yeah. And our guys play with great energy. That's what it comes down to, like we talked about before the game. If we play with great energy, we're going to be a really good team. How do you feel that you guys kept up the energy throughout the first half of the game? I thought it was great. I thought it was good. They made the first run. We, 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 we battled back. They made another run. We battled back. And I think that's, they're a really good team. And Coach Murphy runs a great program. So, you know, they, they're going to battle through it. Who knows what happens? It's, only, it's a nine-point lead, but who knows what could happen. Yeah. Thank awesome. You. Thank you so much. Back to you guys. Well, thank you, Sydney. Good answers from Coach DeMeo. Talked about how they battled back after Florida Southwestern went on those first couple of runs, and they really did a good job of responding. And then once they did respond, hey, they went up nine. Brandon, how did they do it? Well, their defense has simply led to offense, and their half-court pressure has been outstanding here. And you think about what Coach DeMeo just said, his team coming out after a loss. He's played more physical, and they have done exactly that here, bouncing back for their first loss of the season. Tavion Banks has been superb for this Raiders squad, and it's the pressure that's really forced the Florida Southwestern Buccaneers to turn it over and ultimately be down nine at halftime. So 37 to 28. Once again, I'm Chris King alongside my broadcast partner, Brandon Ferguson, for the Dan Patrick School of Sportscasting. Huge thank you to Eastern Florida State College for allowing us to be a part of this 2023 Eastern Florida State JUCO shootout. We'll take a quick break. 37 to 28, your score here from Melbourne, Florida.
build a successful career with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. You can choose from nearly 25 tracks in today's top job fields of business, healthcare, and computer technologies, with classes tailored to meet your needs on campus and online. A bright future awaits you with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. To learn more, visit easternflorida.edu slash go slash bachelors. say that hello and welcome back to Eastern Florida State College we are here at halftime my name is Christian Oposo alongside Skylar Blaine Skylar Northwest Florida leads Florida Southwestern 37 to 28 but Florida Southwestern got out to it hot in the first in the first half what have you seen from both sides defensively though we'll, we'll kick it off with the number one uh, team in the country for, for the Juco in the state of Florida uh, the Northwest Florida State the home team I mean, they are doing a really good job getting out in transition and getting high percentage shots. But what I saw from the number one team was great uh, defensive adjustments. They, they started off in a 2-3. It seemed like the, the Florida Southwestern was getting in the interior and having their way. They made that defensive switch like we were talking about. And then all of a sudden, these turnovers started to happen. And they started to get in transition. They're starting to get easy, bucks in, uh, easy buckets in the interior. And we're seeing a lot of physical basketball here in this arena right now. We've seen a couple guys go down. We've seen a couple little bit of scuffles in the, in the locker room before the half. What are you seeing so far physicality-wise from both teams? It's a defensive matchup. It, it really is uh, on-ball pressure, uh, whether that's in the perimeter or that's in the interior. They're not getting any room to make any plays on, on the ball, man. You're like in a little phone booth. You can't do anything with it. So the defensive pressure is definitely there. They're making it hard. They're contesting every single shot. Uh, usually when you get these showcases, you're thinking, you know, high-flying dunks and, and nice moves. And it's just really, it really is a good old-fashioned uh, defensive chess match. And we have a couple players standing out so far in the first half. We'll start off with Florida Southwestern's number 21, Evan Evan Paul, what are you seeing so far from oh, him? Oh, basketball, basketball. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm, what I'm seeing is in the interior, having his way. You saw a couple nice flashy lobs. Uh, what are those kids that they play 2K? He got the posterizer on gold. So he's really having his way in the interior. And then for, uh, you said the other player for Northwestern? For Northwestern, Tavion Banks, Tavion, nine points. Tavion Banks, uh, again, whether that's the mid-range jumper, uh, hitting him with the midi, or if he's getting in the outside in transition, uh, high percentage shots lead to good results, and it makes the coach happy. We have a very good second half for you in a couple of minutes. We're going to take a break for a little while, but until then, that's about all we have for you for this halftime show. We'll see you at post game. Eastern Florida State College has a two-year aerospace technology degree. We are the only school in the state of Florida that offers this degree. The program is taught by industry professionals. All of the instructors are currently employed or previously employed at NASA. The program manager was part of NASA for 35 years. So you're not getting just somebody that has a degree that's teaching you stuff about aerospace. You're learning from people that actually worked in the aerospace field or currently working in the aerospace field.
Welcome back into the 2023 Eastern Florida State College Men's Juco Shootout where the Florida Southwestern Buccaneers trail by nine points to the number one ranked team in the nation in junior college, the Northwest Florida State Raiders. Brandon, let's take a look at the Florida Southwestern Buccaneers. It's that 4-5 combo with Tyrone Baker and Evans Paul. Yeah, Evans Paul already having 11, Tyrone Baker with nine points, but they're not just doing on the offensive end. Defensively, their energy and effort has been through the roof, and that might you know, get them back into this game. I know it's a nine-point game right now, but more of that from those two, and they can get back in this game easily. You talk about ener energy and effort from this Florida Southwestern Bucks, but right before halftime, I mean, the Northwest Florida State Raiders, they went on a big run to increase their lead to nine and head into halftime with the lead. How did they do it? Uh, they did it by two of their main key players. I know Tavion Banks, almost posterizing uh, player on Florida Southwestern at the end, got a few free throws out of it, but they're trapping their defensive pressure have, have been really good, and that's what uh, catapulted them to this nine-point lead. 37-28, here we go for the second half of our first matchup in the 2023 Eastern Florida State College men's JUCO shootout. It's the Buccaneers with the ball trying to cut into the deficit that they ultimately forced themselves to play with with some sloppy play at the end of the first half. I see switching from the three guards on the court for the Raiders, switching Tyrone, everything. Tyrone Baker at the free throw line, Hopkins Tries a three, that one's short. Good contest by Simpkins. Contested three there. Ball goes out and it's gonna, it's gonna stay down here for the Florida Southwestern Buccaneers. Yeah, great contest by Simpkins. I mean, the way he was able to alter that shot from Hopkins, he's been quiet from the three-point line today. He shoots 46% on the season. The Buccaneers just get it in. So it's 15 seconds left on the shot clock for the Buccaneers. Tyrone Baker fakes the dribble handoff. Lob, Paul had it blocked away by Scheider. He got the rebound and passed it to Rasheed Jones. Kick it wide open. Sumlin, triple got it. Defense leading to offense. That's going to be key for the Raiders. To keeping their lead and, and looking to win this game. And, Brandon, we talked about the dangers of building that deficit at the end of the half. I mean, they're down 12 now. This could get ugly if they're not careful. Quick three, not ideal for the Buccaneers. As a turnover there from Desrick Lindsay, an errant pass trying to get it down low to Evans Paul. And a timeout called on the floor for the Buccaneers. Eric Murphy had seen enough already through a minute and seven seconds in this second half. And looks like the Northwest Florida State Raiders just came out with more energy. They did. Just They started this half just how they finished last half. Energy, defense, and if you're Florida Southwestern, I mean, you have to, you have to get something rolling. you got to get the ball rolling at some point to cut into this lead and take all the momentum away from the Raiders. Up next, after this one, it'll be the Gulf Coast State versus the number 22 team in the junior college rankings, Eastern Florida State College Titans, the host of this tournament. They're eight and one on the season. They've won three in a row. They beat Palm Beach State 68 to 61 in their last game. And they're looking to start off this Eastern Florida State College Juco shootout with a bang at two o'clock. And for now in this game, if Florida Southwestern has not set the tone here after this timeout, uh, they've been forced to call it after the Raiders came out uh, hot uh, after halftime. They have to, they have to, they have to get going here uh, if they want to stay in this game. And Eric Murphy, such an experienced head coach, he knows when his team is down and they needed a timeout right there. They just needed a reset. They had turned it over multiple times. They had had missed shots, big air balls, and great defensive stands from the Raiders and. Credit to Eric Murphy. And coming out of that timeout, Eric Murphy had a little full court press and talking here from was it, A.J. Hopkins and Rasheed Jones on that reach in he just had. Scheider was playing most of that first half with a couple of fouls. Sizing up and knocking it down is Rasheed Jones. Rasheed Jones. 
the right over Evans Paul. The f yeah, the freshman from Indiana shooting that over a 6'7". Evans Paul with a, with a long wingspan. Good shot. Good finish for the Raiders. Tyrone Baker sets a screen. He's got it on the right wing. Pump fakes, drives in. The kick, the three. Thomas buries it. Three Needed that three-pointer for the Bucks. 31 to 43. Now back to 12. Both teams get a couple of threes after a first half that didn't have many three-point made shots. Simpkins looking for a pass down low, batted away and ended up going out on Tavion Banks. That's going to be Florida Southwestern ball down, down 11 here, 12 here, excuse me, in the second half. And I will say, Brandon, it looks like the Buccaneers have done a great job containing Taewon Simpkins. I mean, at the end of the day, he's averaging 15 points per game, and they've done a good job of shutting him down so far, only a couple of points for Taewon Simpkins. And your third foul on Jaden Scheider, your big man. Third foul here early in the second half. Fouls on number 10, Jayden And he Scheider didn't like it. The ref liked it and caught it, and now we're going to have out here from under the baseline for the Buccaneers. 43-31, the Buccaneers trying to get back within single digits. And a big foul on Simpkins is... It was Thomas who got him in the air and then ultimately was landed on by Taewon Simpkins. What a, what a head fake there from Thomas. The Simpkins, or yeah, Taewon Simpkins almost jumped. You almost cleared him. Yeah, almost, almost cleared, cleared him. him. It was almost like uh, it's like Jan Giannis and yeah. I think it was Hart or Tim Hardaway Jr. Yeah, a couple, yeah. couple years back. You can use plenty. Of, hey, look, they got the they got the ref on the mop job. That's it's got to be malpractice there by <laughs> having having the ref. Double Do duty. Work. Yeah, he's getting his money's worth. Double duty. Always a pleasure to be on the call here at Eastern Florida State College. I'm Chris King alongside my broadcast partner, Brandon Ferguson, for the Dan Patrick School of Sportscasting. It's such a pleasure to be watching two amazing teams in junior college and really building historic programs compete versus each other in a good matchup so far. Yeah, a good matchup and a, a great matchup, in fact, for the first game here to set the tone uh, for this weekend of basketball here in Melbourne, Florida. Thomas driving on Jones, fade away, missed the mid-range, Simpkins pushing transition, and Rasheed Jones will just slow it down. He had a big three a couple possessions ago. They get it to Sumlin, he also made a three. Huge, huge half. screen by Scheider, which has Jay Sean Thomas limping on the court, absolute brick wall. From ten Simpkins and white. tries for three. In and out, Baker rebounds it for the Buccaneers. A good stop there. Sumlin now switched on to Thomas. Tyrone Baker splits the double. The lob. And a blocking foul called. That's Scheider's fourth foul. That's his fourth foul. 16 minutes and 33 seconds into the second half. Scheider will have to exit the game for F.A. Aglu. And Cole, Cole Franklin subbing in for the Buccaneers after this first free throw. And tough break for Scheider. He had a few ones, uh, questionable calls that could have went either way. But they did not go his way. Four fouls here for the big man. Tyrone Baker knocked down the first free throw. When Tyrone Baker went to Georgia, he didn't get many minutes. He had a couple of injuries, hurt his wrist at the Georgia Bulldogs program under Tom Crean back when he was there and ultimately made the move to Dayton, comes back to the JUCO level. And he's really made his presence felt today, showing that he's battled with the D1 guys at the Division I level, and he can come down here and hoop as well. 43-33, 10-point lead. Here comes someone. Crafty move, rejected by Evans Paul. Huge block there. Good move from someone, but better defense from Evans Paul. Hopkins wide open. No good. Hopkins like gets called for a foul there. 
looks like a frustration foul there from Hopkins. He just really hasn't been able to get it going for the Buccaneers despite his hot shooting so far this season at 46%. He's 0 for 4 from beyond the arc today. So even with a wide open one, wasn't able to hit. And that's a big credit to the Raiders defense. They did their scouting. They did their homework on Hopkins. Franklin with tight on ball pressure on someone. Sumlin, good ball movement. Simpkins, corner, short, rebound to the Buccaneers. That's Cole Franklin. 10 point game still, 15 minutes, 45 seconds left in this game. Quick pull up jumper, no good. Tavion banks the rebound. And so he, he was loud in that first half and started off this second half, hasn't really done much, but there, once again, skying in for the rebound, doing the things that his teammates may not want to do. F.A. Oglu driving, kicking. Back to Jones, too strong. Evans Paul rebound, and the Buccaneers are running. Good stretch here for defensive wise for the Buccaneers. Have to follow through on offense if they want to cut down this lead. The Raiders lead 10 by 10 points here in the second half. Desdrick Lindsay driving and fouled. Desdrick Lindsay will head to the line for two. They can finally get back within single digits, but not before this media timeout. So once again, you're listening to the 2023 Eastern Florida State College men's JUCO shootout here at Eastern Florida State College. 43-33 your score, and we will take a quick break. Welcome back from the 2023 Eastern Florida State College JUCO shootout. The Florida Southwestern Buccaneers trail by 10. They will head to the line. It'll be Desdrick Lindsay who will shoot two when we come out of this media timeout. But after a big run to start this second half, Brandon, the Northwest Florida State Raiders got up by as much as 15 in this second half. But now it's back to 10, and they have a chance to make it back to 8. What have you seen from Florida Southwestern just kind of settling in? The Bucks are slowing this game down. I mean, they're getting to the free throw line. They're slowing, they're slowing this game down because when you have Northwest Florida, the number one ranked team uh, in junior college, running all over you on defense and offense, they just need to slow the game down and, and catch their breath and just play the, their brand of, of basketball uh, and to continue to try and come back here uh, in Eastern Florida State College. So Desdrick Lindsay heads to the line, number four. Career high is 27 points. Scored that last year versus Hillsborough. And when Hillsborough plays, they actually played Northwest Florida and Hillsborough plays in uh, tomorrow's game, uh, tomorrow morning at 12 in this tournament. So the worlds collide. It's crazy. Worlds collide. Tyrone Baker from Dayton. He's a University of Dayton Flyer former. And Desdrick mm -hmm. Lindsay, the career high team that he, he put it up against, is, is here at Eastern Florida State. It's just the chaos, the small world is going around. 43-35, that's what you get at the Eastern Florida State College Junior College shootout. 2-3 zone here from the Buccaneers. Tavion Banks at the top of the key. It's a 7-0 run for the Buccaneers. The Raiders trying to quiet that. F.A. Oglu, Simpkins, three, buried it. As the shot clock expires, Taewon Sim Simpkins gets it back going and in a big way. Simpkins and Rasheed Jones was absolutely running through that 2-3 zone. I mean, they were working those two guards up top, causing that open three eventually in the corner. Here the defense chance from the Northwest Florida State Raiders showing support for their team. Hopkins, can he hit his first one? Evans Paul, rebound. Puts a hard dribble and lays it in over Tavion Banks. 
Evans Paul is a force down there. See the athleticism out of the freshman. And to think Evans Paul is just a freshman at that, so growing another three, four years into a more well all around basketball player is going to be fun to see. Simpkins, they get it to Tavion Banks in the corner. And the Raiders working his 2 3. Simpkins driving through. Rasheed Jones. No good. The Buccaneers now to Hopkins. Can he get on the board? No, but he's fouled. Rasheed Jones. Rasheed Jones shaking off his hand after smacking that off the backboard, although there was a foul called. And getting to the line again for uh, the Buccaneers are. And, and how important will these free throws be from a guy like A.J. Hopkins, who can really shoot the three but hasn't been able to convert so far today? Very important. I mean, at this point, 13 minutes left. Right now you're at 38-46. You're just, you're just cutting, cutting the score down. One, uh, one bucket at a time and keep playing defense and everything else will fall through if you're the Buccaneers. And a shooter like that, they, they get to see the ball go into the hoop as he missed the second one, got the first one to go, eight point game, 46-38. And the Buccaneers doing a full court, showing full court press and see if they go back to this two three zone, which they are, which the Raiders have scored on in two of the last three possessions. Raiders on top with the ball and the lead, 46-38. Simpkins getting crafty, puts up a left-handed scoop, and nice job there by Reese Jones with the contest. Almost, almost on that finish there from Simpkins. Desdrick Lindsay, nice pump fake, moves inside, gets it to go, the shooters roll. Good head fake on that three, drives in. And Dedrick Lindsay, I tell you, he was floating through the air to make that adjustment layup. Rasheed Jones on the right-hand side of the court. They get it inside to Tyrese Elliott. Ifoglu in the corner. Baker playing good defense. F.A. Oglu drives baseline. Tavion Banks. Got a foul on Tavion on Tavion Banks from A.J. Hopkins. 46 to 40 here, 12 minutes left in this first game of the Juco shootout. They're cutting Wide it down slowly. Wide open, down low for a layup is Rasheed Jones. Caught the Buccaneers sleeping. Sneaking through on that inbound play. There's nobody on him, nobody accounted for Rasheed Jones on that quick cut. Lead back to eight for the Raiders. 11.53 to go in this game. A 2-3 zone, a 3-2 zone look from the Raiders. Six seconds left on the shot clock. Desrick Lindsay, he's got to go. Step back, three ball. Tavion Banks the rebound. Tavion Banks soaring in for the rebound. Is, there's about six seconds on the shot clock, but Northwest Florida bench obviously trying to mess the Buccaneers, counting down 3-2-1. Miss shot regardless. 11.28 to go in the game. The Buccaneers had it. Back to six. Rasheed Jones tried to punch it, and he was fouled. Looking for the reverse dunk on a beautiful backdoor cut and a good find there from Tyrese Elliott. And Rasheed Jones just a few inches away from banging that one home. Hit a nice back cut, and Rasheed Jones tried to do a 180 midair and go punch it on Baker. but Standing reverse off two. Off two feet. That's impressive. But Baker wasn't having it. But ultimately, Rasheed Jones will head to the line for two free throws, 48-40. It looked like a miscommunication. You could see Tyrone Baker and his teammate, number 10, Cole Franklin, talking about their defensive assignments there. And Rasheed Jones just had a wide open lane in that back cut. So something happened there between those two, but they're, they're figuring it out. Mopping up the talent up the floor, however you want to put it. And Rasheed Jones, when Northwest Florida has this lineup with, uh, with Sumlin and Tyrese Elliott, two shorter players at 6'3", 6'2", relative to everybody else, to have a 6'6", Rasheed Jones with a long wingspan flying around on defense and 
trying to get dunks like that on offense as the 64% free throw shooter misses the first one. Previously went to Western Carolina and hometown originally from Marion, Indiana. Another Division I transfer and across this whole Eastern Florida State College Junior Shootout, you will have multiple players who have been to the Division I level and came back down to the junior college level to prove themselves once again. You've got three on the on the Raiders of Northwest Florida State with Jamal Sumlin, uh, Rasheed Jones, and Tyrese Elliott who went to NC A and T. Evans Paul slams it down. In three two zone. They just broke through the zone in the soft spot, right at that free throw line. Forcing the defender to come up, which left an even Evans Paul for a wide open cut, ending in a lob. Taking the top off was that one. With that one was Evans Paul as he caught it and, and just punched that one in the center of the earth. I mean, mm -hmm. that was an aggressive finish. 49-42, the score for the Buccaneers and Raiders here at Eastern Florida State College. An aggressive 2-3 zone. The Bucks are staying in. Tyrese Elliott pulls. Missed it, someone with the rebound, Elliott. F.A. Oglu with it, Tavion Banks back to Tyrese Elliott who had it knocked away off of his knee. So good defensive stand out, look, seven point game. And if you're the Buccaneers, you've gotta be thinking, we can cut this down to five or four here. And it would be huge for them because they went back down double digits. They've been trying to fighting, been trying to fight, but but they haven't been able to get all the way back yet. Yep, and AJ Hopkins just just subbing in for the Raiders, and this is a big possession for the Buccaneers. They're all going to be big coming down this final stretch, but under 10 minutes here, down seven points. As a good drive in and a beautiful finish from Jay Sean Thomas, putting some English on it to cut the lead to five for the Raiders. Jay Sean Thomas, the sophomore from Aurora, Illinois. Getting fancy down low. As here's F.A. Oglu, missed it, got his own board. He's triple team. The Buccaneers thought they forced a turnover, but it'll stay with the Raiders, so it's a media timeout. 49-44, this one is gearing up to be a good one. I'm Chris King with Brandon Ferguson for the Eastern Florida State College Junior College Shootout. a successful career with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. You can choose from nearly 25 tracks in today's top job fields of business, healthcare, and computer technologies with classes tailored to meet your needs on campus and online. A bright future awaits you with a bachelor's degree from Eastern Florida State College. To learn more, visit easternflorida.edu slash go slash bachelors. Hey everybody, welcome back. You're watching the 22nd annual Florida Colleges JUCO Shootout, live from Eastern Florida State and Titan Fieldhouse in Melbourne, Florida. Any rebroadcast or any other use of today's coverage without the express written consent of Eastern Florida State or the Florida Colleges Shootout is prohibited. 49-44, this is gearing up to be an amazing finish for the first game of four in two days with six teams and it's the number one team in the junior college rankings. The Northwest Florida State Raiders clinging to a five point lead over the Buccaneers of Florida Southwestern. Here's a lob, Tavion Banks missed it. No good there on the lob, just too far away from the rim when he got the ball up in the air and couldn't quite control himself. So a huge opportunity for the Buccaneers. This Northwest Florida came out of halftime on a run, but ever since, Florida Southwestern has really been controlling 
controlling the momentum here. Five seconds left. Desdrick Lindsay's got to go. He's got to put it up. Two seconds left. Short. Shot clock violation. The Raiders flexing their muscles on defense. Jamal Sumlin smothering Desdrick Lindsay out on the perimeter, forcing that air ball and shot clock violation. 49-44, five-point game. The Raiders had a nine-point lead into halftime. That's trimmed down. Florida Southwestern program is no joke, but a win over the number one team of, in the JUCO standings right now will be a huge spark to their program. Tyrese Elliott, are you kidding me? High off the glass with the bucket and the foul. Beautiful kiss off the glass high on that backboard. What a finish and one for Tyrese Elliott. The North Carolina A&T former Aggie comes down to the Northwest Florida State Raiders and is playing a huge part in this second half. As the ref pointing out some spots that need mopping up, and what a I mean, what a response for the Raiders after after playing relatively slowly, then coming back with that huge and one. 51-44, the, Ra uh, the Raiders lead as the Buccaneers. Has an opportunity to make it 8-2, and this would be a huge turnaround. You think about it, the Buccaneers were just down five. They get a shot clock violation there, and then now a potential three-point play here for Tyrese Elliott, and this will be huge for the Raiders' momentum down the stretch. He puts it in, gets the friendly roll, eight-point lead. Someone pressuring anybody with the ball, moving both sides, left to right. Back in that zone are the Raiders. 8.25 to go in this game. The first matchup of our 2023 Eastern Florida State College Juco shootout. Desdrick Lindsay driving. He was bumped. Made the basket, but as the foul was called, looked back at the ref. Still made it. What a finish, but it's going to be on the floor here. On Tyrese Elliott gets his third foul. Six fouls on the Raiders now, so next time the Buccaneers get fouled, they'll be in the one-on-one. -on -one. Thomas, jab step, goes left, up and under, blocked away, F.A. Oglu. Says, how about some stuffing for your turkey? Huge block from F.A. Oglu. You see how I did there? I did, I see what you there did there, you Chris. Go. The Istanbul native. Turkey sending that one out of bounds and now 15 seconds left on the shot clock for the Buccaneers. Another back cut on the baseline out of bounds. Desert Lindsay driving, had it batted away and stolen. Sumlin so scrappy down low. Tyrese Elliott once again gets to the left hand and gets another bucket. And Tyrese Elliott's in on go mode right now. Anytime he gets the ball, he's putting his head down and going straight to the basket and finishing over any Southwestern Florida defender he sees. He's taking over right now for the Raiders. Tyrese Elliott, the North Carolina a and transfer. Seven minutes, 37 seconds to go in this game. A three from the corner. Evans Paul, offensive board. Desrick Lindsay, wide open pump fakes. Nice Euro, goes up right-handed and puts it off the glass for two. What a finish. Over, over the 6'10 freshman, Brandon Sinclair, who's checked in for Northwest Florida. Athletic finish over the big man. 54-46, the cutting Raider, and that one just popped up and in. He got stolen, but on the way up, all his momentum brought the ball and it ended up dropping. That was Trey Brown, who had it knocked away and laid it in. Here's Brown once again. They slow it down, a 10-point lead now for the Raiders. In Northwest Florida's bench is getting into it as they have a lot of momentum, up 10 with 6.50 to go. Tyrese Elliott controlling, working on Baker, right-handed, missed it, gets his own board, out of bounds off of the Raiders. Tyrese Elliott, good effort there, but just couldn't come up with it off of his own miss. Good effort from Elliott and also good effort from Trey Brown, just checked in. He's all over the place, all over the court right now, and he's staying on the floor, and Tyrese Elliott checks out. 
and Rasheed Jones checks back in, and he actually went over to the trainer's table and had a little tape put on his one of one, one of his hands. Still checking it out, Rasheed Jones. Lead is back to 10 for the Raiders. Their largest was 15 in this second half. And back to man coverage. Brandon, what do you think the Buccaneers need to do to get something going here? The Buccaneers need to generate open shot, and any way you get evens, Paul, involved in this game is going to be positive for the Buccaneers. Two seconds left on the shot clock. It's turned over. Someone in transition. He's got speed. It's pinned off glass. Rebound. Trey Brown gets it, and the Raiders will slow it up. The Raiders wanted a goal 10 on that, on that block. Chase down for Seven the Buccaneers. Seven seconds left on the shot clock for the Raiders. Rasheed Jones got to go. Missed it. Baker skies in. Pushing in transition. Jayshon Thomas. Charge. Coach Eric Murphy hates the call. He's giving it to our, offici our officiating crew. We've had a few blocks and charges that could have went either way, and, and Coach Eric Murphy's not, not liking any of it. Eric Murphy was talking to our officiating crew, Daniel Alpont, Justin Gonzalez, So now we get the, the players in on the action yeah. for Rasheed Jones Zanarmont. mopping up <laughs> under the right basket here. And up 10 points and just the way Northwest Florida can just turn on all this, they just have energy that they can just pull out of a hat. And what do you think it's been? Has it been that press that they just started running again, the, that trap defense? Or is it just the half court possessions, the defense? It's, it's, it's when they're running. It's whenever Northwest is running uh, on transitions and offense and then playing good defense. When they're running fast, they're running good. Sumlin had it blocked away, evens Paul. Tyrone Baker gets it to Dedrick Lindsay and he lays it in. Just easy taking the two. Now eight point game, five minutes and eight seconds to go in this game. The Buccaneers have to get some more stops than just that. Nice move, Simpkins kicks it wide open, Sumlin. Missed it. And a man defense look there from Florida Southwestern as they push now on offense. Jason Thomas driving through multiple defenders. Had it blocked away. Missed it. Baker gets it back. Thomas tries a three and puts it in. Beautiful shot. Evens Paul. Huge offensive rebound for the Buccaneers leading to that Thomas three-pointer. So now a five-point game. We've been back and forth so far. And now we're gearing up for a great finish from Melbourne, Florida and Eastern Florida State College. This is the 22nd annual college men's basketball shootout. And Eastern Florida State College has a two-year aerospace technology degree. We are the only school in the state of Florida that offers this degree. The program is taught by industry professionals. All of the instructors are currently employed or previously employed at NASA. The program manager was part of NASA for 35 years. So you're not getting just somebody that has a degree that's teaching you stuff about aerospace. You're learning from people that actually worked in the aerospace field or currently working in the aerospace field. Welcome back, I'm Chris King alongside my broadcast partner, Brandon Ferguson from the Dan Patrick School of Sportscasting. Big thank you to Eastern Florida State College, Christine Wynn, one of our course directors, and everybody involved with the Eastern Florida State College. It's a pleasure to be here on the first day and the first game. It's the Northwest Florida State Raiders on top by five, but it didn't always look like that. That was a 5-0 run to head, head to the media timeout for the Florida Southwestern Buccaneers. And what really allowed the Florida Southwestern Buccaneers to kind of get back into this game, Brandon? Well, on that last three-pointer from Jay Sean Thomas, Evans Paul doesn't get that rebound. They don't have a shot at it. So Evans Paul on the offensive boards, and this whole Florida Southwestern team on the offensive boards is going to be big. And that Jay Sean Thomas three from the 2023 Southern Conference, he was only a uh, 2023 Southern Conference all academic team. And a huge shot there to cut it to a five point lead. And we have a full court 
Turns into a half court press, just Desrick Lindsay pressuring Rasheed Jones. Both teams with six fouls, so both teams in the bonus on the one and one. Here comes Tyrese Elliott, he's been huge. Dribble the, handoff. The Bucks are switching everything on defense. The Bucks need a stop here. Rasheed Jones with eight seconds left on the shot clock. Drives, it's put back by Evans Paul, and now the Buccaneers are running with it. Lindsey tried to force it inside to Paul, get it back, and he will miss. It's missed by the Buccaneers. Rebound Simpkins, and he's traveled. He traveled with it, threw it up to himself. He can't believe it. Tawan Simpkins thinks it was touched by a Florida Southwestern player, calls him to go back in and capture his dribble again, but our referee says otherwise, and that's going to be Florida Southwestern ball here with 4.01 to go, a five-point game as Desrick Lindsay passes it in. Yeah, he was shocked. He let out a big what to Justin Gonzalez after the travel call. I maybe thought there would be an out-of-bounds call there. We play on. Three minutes, 52. Tyrone Baker and the foul. A big bucket for the Division I transfer. And it falls against Simpkins again. Another tough, tough go for Simpkins as he's looking over at his coach, not knowing what to do. Good defense played, better offense. Tyrone Baker getting back in on the action, trying to cut this to a two-point game with 3.50 to go. That's Taewon Simpkins' third foul. Tyrone Baker at the line. Look, they just sent Taewon Simpkins, their best scorer to the bench with under four minutes to go in this game. How long do you have him out, Brandon? Well, they got Sumlin coming back in for scoring, but I mean, Simpkins has to come back in this game. Three, 250 maybe, 240, you can't have him out too long. 56-54, two point game. The Raiders had a nine point lead at halftime, a 15 point lead in the second half. It's down to two. And Jaden Scheider back in, number 10, down low with four fouls for the Raiders in this late game situation. Tavion Banks tries to force it inside. Scheider picks it up and puts it in. Jaden Scheider. Jaden Scheider just said, look what I found. And he picked it up off of the deflection from the Buccaneers, and he put it in. 58 to 54, a lot to unpack here as there's three minutes and 20 seconds left in this ball game. Brandon just back and forth now what do both teams have to do to pull this one out the Raiders have to keep they have to keep their foot on the pedal offensively and the Bucks have been getting a lot of a lot of uh, possessions a lot of loose balls a lot of 50 50 balls and that's what it's going to come down to if they want to win this game they have to do the extra things against the number one team in junior college well and the number one team in junior college on the ropes here down or up four, excuse me, 58 54. But it was just a two point game. They got lucky there as they tried to force a pass inside. Elliott did, and it was picked up by Scheider and put in. But the Buccaneers with a chance to get it back to one possession game with three minutes and 20 seconds to go in our first matchup of the 2023 Eastern Florida State Juco shootout. Aggressive man defense from Northwest Florida. Thomas lobbed it up and down. A charge is called off after the pass. And Northwest Florida and everybody on their team cannot believe the call and Coach Eric Murphy is irate. Wow, what a call there on the lob to Evans Paul. And Murphy does not like it at all. Wow. Coach Eric Murphy is not a fan of this call. Basket's no good giving it to our officiating crew. And that was his fourth too, Jayshon Thomas, who had been a big part of why this Eastern Florida, excuse me, Florida Southwestern Buccaneers team was coming back into this game, hit that big three in the corner and was really facilitating the offense. The sophomore guard was, was running their offense perfectly and could now it's just a rough world right now for Coach Eric Murphy, but and now a full court press, showed a full court press, gonna back into probably a half court press. Four points here, Northwest Florida leads. So obviously player control fouls, no free throws being shot for the Raiders. Sumlin with it on the left wing. The Raiders lead by four, 12 seconds left on the shot clock. There and man. Jones gets it, Elliott, he's been hot. Missed it, R rebound. Who's gonna pick it up? It's the Buccaneers. 
Huge block from Evans Paul. Been saying his name all afternoon, and yet again, a huge impact play from an impact player. 58-54, two minutes, 26 seconds left in this matchup. The Buccaneers trying to get their first ranked win of the season. And that's Scheider's five, fifth. He cannot believe it. He cannot believe it. That is his fifth foul as Jay Sean Thomas dr drives in. They call a blocking foul of reaching in on Scheider. That's a tough break for and, the center. And not only is it his fifth foul, the Buccaneers will head to the line for the one and one. So now this will be interesting because now you start to score with the stop with the shot clocks or with the game clock stopped and That'll be huge for the Buccaneers as long as they can convert, convert free throws. And Jayshon Thomas is stretching out that left knee, left leg, going up and down half court now. Finally settles in to the free throw line to cut the Bucks down to a two-point deficit. 86% free throw shooter, one of the best on this Buccaneers team. Knocks in the first one, three-point game. Sophomore from Illinois has been, has been key in this the second half and especially these last 10 minutes of this ball game in, in establishing the Buccaneers offense. Big free throw for the sophomore. 58-55, he puts both of them in 58-56 now. The Buccaneers just have to dial in and get one more stop. What does it take to do it, Brandon? Uh, exactly what they're doing at the trap. Quick feet, quick hands. You can't get beat on any backdoor cuts, nothing like that. You gotta stay in front of your man. Sumlin to Jones to Banks. He's been quiet. Finds a cutting Elliott, it's classed! And if you are gonna get it beat on a backdoor cut, have the ability to do that. What a block from Tyrone Baker. Baker's been huge offensively and defensively. Multiple blocks on the night. The high flyer out of Florida. So a buck 35 left in this game. Coach Eric Murphy Dedrick wanted Lindsay. Lindsay to pass that. Lindsay gets it, Baker, Mitty, good! Tyrone, Tyrone Baker is on fire on both sides of the ball, ties this one at 58. And Jay Sean Thomas is loving it, clapping his hands. Really got the Buccaneers active on defense. Sumlin, the Cleveland, Ohio native, splits the double. Has it tipped its in the rafters and out of bounds off of the Buccaneers. The Raiders maintain possessions, but with just 13 seconds left on this shot clock, F.A. Oglu set to check in for the white team. 58 all here, a minute and nine left in the first game of the Juco shootout. What a game it's been. And Brandon, I wanna talk about Tyrone Baker. Tyrone Baker has been huge so far on both ends of the ball. He literally got the ball with two seconds left on the shot clock and just put it up and in on that mid-range jumper. What makes him so special, Brandon? I mean, doing stuff like that uh, on that mid-range jumper, just having the ability to jump up and uh, nothing set, have him change your weight and still make the shot. And then on defense, him smacking, I mean, glassing that, that backdoor cut, a huge block, uh, which is the reason why this game is tied right now. And how intimidating that is that for opposing guards when you've got Evans Paul and Tyrone Baker down low and getting ready to block your shot. I mean, that's that's why you've seen been seeing a lot of guards driving in and then trying to dump off down low, which some of those passes have been stolen. And if those passes do get through, it's either a you know a quick pump fake or or a block. Um, Evans Paul is six seven, he plays like he's six ten, and Tyrone Baker is six ten and he plays like he's seven foot. I mean it's just absolute great to see athletes like this out here playing basketball. 58-58, one minute and nine seconds left in this game. 13 seconds on the shot clock for the Raiders. What's at stake? The Northwest Florida State Raiders getting their second loss of the season or the Buccaneers getting their third. Sumlin kicks it. Banks, two seconds left. Stolen away. Baker, once again, on cue Ta on the defensive end. Tavion Banks with a missed dribble. Good pressure by Baker. 46 seconds left in this game. We're all tied up at 58. Baker, once again, keep working, keep scoring. Tyrone Baker, what more can you say? These last two minutes, he's gonna be the reason 
the Bucks are going to have a chance in tonight's game. Tavion Banks working on Paul. Here's F.A. Aglu in the corner. Kicks it wide open. Jones. He missed it. Offensive rebound by Tavion Banks. It's all on the floor. We're scrambling for it. Possession arrow to the Raiders with 16 seconds left in this game. They call it a jump ball. Wow. Desrick Lindsay on the floor. Everybody on the floor. The Buccaneers are loving it. And the Buccaneers are up two with 16.8 seconds left. And we have confirmation on that possession going to Northwest. Northwest Florida timeout. A timeout on the floor. Now we'll have to see if they called the timeout when the ball was being fought for. I, I think it's, it's still the Raiders' ball. Yeah, it is still the Raiders' ball. They have the possession arrow. But look, wow, Tyrone Baker has been huge down the stretch on the offensive end and defensive end, just forced a turnover and then gets the go-ahead two-point jumper. And then, look, Brandon, I mean, this will be a huge win for the Northwest Florida, uh, the Florida Southwestern Buccaneers, excuse me, if they can knock off the number one team in the nation. What do they have to do to lock in for these last 16.8 seconds and defeat the Raiders of Northwest Florida? Northwest Florida, I mean, they're going to look, they're looking Jamal Sumlin, they're looking to Juan Simpkins, their main shooters, and it's, and Tavion Banks as well, even though he had that last turnover. And for Florida Southwestern, Tyron Baker is, is 6'10", shooting fadeaways, but also is going to come down on the defensive end and use that length. And that might be what might win them the game. Tyron Baker and then Evans Paul putting in crazy work on both sides. Yeah, the Florida Southwestern Buccaneers have made the Raiders of Northwest Florida come up empty on their last couple of possessions. They've closed this one out on a 7-0 run. Down two. Northwest Florida's ball. It's going to be Tyrese Elliott taking it out. Down two with 16.8. Here we go. 16 seconds left. And a bump. That's a foul. That's two free throws for the Raiders. What a tough break for Buccaneers. It looked like Sumlin and who's that? Tavion Banks like kind of ran, ran into, into each other. other. Right, they yeah. kind of cut yeah. in the same sure. area, which resulted in a foul. And Tavion Banks, two big free throws here in the 12th game of the season for him. Tavion Banks to the line. He's a 61.9% free throw shooter for this Raiders team. And so the Raiders obviously have to get this one-on-one -on -one situation, have to get this first one to go. Down two. Banks cashes in on the first one. So. One free throw here, and you tie the game and you play defense if you're the Raiders, but if you miss it, you gotta think about trying to go for a steal, maybe get a foul. Banks puts them both in, clutch free throw shooting from the sophomore out of Kansas City, Missouri. That's be. And Florida Southwestern is gonna take that timeout to advance the ball, and with 15.8, coach Eric Murphy Looking to draw up something for this. Yeah, and who, who do you think you go to, Brandon, with this Florida Southwestern Buccaneers team? Because you have Tyrone Baker. He's hot right now, and he's knocking them down from the mid-range. But you also have sneaky guys that have been hot in this second half, like a Jay Sean Thomas, like a Desdrick Lindsay. So where are you going when you have just 15 seconds left, but you can hold for the last shot? I mean, it would be hard not to go back to Tyron Baker after you know seeing him score the way he has but I mean you have to watch uh, Jay Sean Thomas like you said it's gonna it has to go with either a, maybe a pick and roll action from Jay Sean Thomas to Tyrone Baker and it's gonna be it's gonna be close here 60 all with 15.8 the number one ranked team on the ropes here in Eastern Florida State College look and it wouldn't be an Eastern Florida State College Juco shootout without a barn burner and this one has been a great game of college basketball 60 to 60 with two of the best teams in Florida Junior College playing each other I mean this has been such a treat to watch Brandon yes absolutely and kicking off this tournament right coming down to a last second shot situation here in 15.8, you got to think the Buccaneers are going to 
hold this for the last shot. And if they do take a shot before, before like about four or five seconds, it has to be a beautiful, has to be a wide open shot. The ball does not get advanced here. It's going to be Cole Franklin passing it in for the Buccaneers with 15.8 left, 60 all. Here we go. The trap from the Raiders come. Jay Sean Thomas with it. He's trapped, and it's tipped out of bounds off of the Raiders. 9.3 now for the Buccaneers of Florida Southwestern. Aggressive defense from the Raiders there. You don't want to foul in this situation. Aggressive defense with the trap, and then eventually that ball getting tipped out. But now they have the ball advanced with 9.3 to go. Cole Franklin side out here for Florida Southwestern. 9.3. Here comes Jay Sean Thomas. Top of the key, five seconds to work. Evans Paul. Baker for the win. Halfway down, we are headed to overtime. Extra basketball in Melbourne, Florida. Hey, that's a treat for us. What a last possession for the Raiders of Northwest Florida State. A great defensive stand. They weren't letting anything get inside, and that's where the Florida Southwestern Buccaneers were able to do their damage, Brandon. And ultimately, they get up a prayer from Tyrone Baker, who's not a three-point shooter, and he missed it, and we're headed to five minutes of extra college basketball. Yep. It ended up being a, a Jay Sean Thomas and then a, a Evans Paul pick and roll action, which led to Tyrone Baker uh, being open in the corner. And when you're 6'10 and you rise up, I mean, it's almost every shot is almost going to be uh, – uh, be not contested and that's what that's what it was and it was a tough shot and almost almost made it but we got extra basketball here and you cannot complain about that first game of the juco shootout 60 to 60 heading to overtime so what are you looking for in this overtime to kind of allow one team to separate themselves from the other we've seen big runs from both sides a 15 point lead in that second half from the raiders of northwest florida state and then they ultimately blew it. Florida, Florida Southwestern, they came back and sent it to overtime. What can either team do to extend their lead and ultimately come away with a win? It's all, it's all about momentum. I mean, you see Northwest Florida, their momentum fell off and towards the end coming back and eventually tying it and forcing it to overtime for Southwestern. It's going to be about those first two possessions and really establishing the tone in overtime because it's 0-0 right now. It's a whole new, it's a five-minute period of who can sco score more, and it's, it's going to start out with the momentum of these first two possessions. And Tyron Baker and Tavion Banks on the tip-off here. Wow, what a game for the first game of this Juco shootout. Number one, Northwest Florida tied up and with we're South up Florida Southwestern. We're up and away. Five minutes of extra basketball here in Melbourne, Florida. 60 to 60. Sumlin gives it to Elliott. He had a pretty good second half. A couple of nice buckets. As well as Rasheed Jones who handles it on the top of the key. Man defense. High on ball pressure right now for the Buccaneers. Tavion Banks with seven on the shot clock. Spinning. Working. Scoring. Wow, he wears that 24 good. Look at that beautiful fadeaway. So, some flashes of Kobe here at Melbourne, Florida's Eastern Florida State College. 62-60, the Raiders jump out to a two-point lead in overtime. Here's Franklin, 12 seconds left on the shot clock. Tyrone Baker gets it to a wide open Thomas. Missed a three. Evans Paul offensive board. Cole Franklin's open on the right wing. They will slow it down. And Evans Paul, offensive rebound. Very important for the Bucks to win this one. Just the workhorse is Evans Paul. And he's working, missed it. He fumbled it on his way up for an easy layup or a dunk. It was a beautiful bounce pass around the defender, but could not, Evans Paul could not quite contain the ball as he was rising up with it. Sumlin and Banks working the two-man game, get it to Rasheed Jones. Elliott in that pick and roll with Banks. Takes the screen, working on that left-hand side. Tavion Banks, sizing up, shooting. 
and getting another one. Tavion Banks went quiet in that second half, but two free throws to send it to overtime and then two big buckets to put the Raiders up four. And he seen he had the big man on him, gave him a few jab steps and rised up and over him for that beautiful mid-range jumper. Jay Sean Thomas, the Illinois native, getting it to Desdrick Lindsay. A, a two three, a three two look now for the Raiders. Wide open three, Franklin, as the buzzer expires, he hit it, he drilled it. That's what you're gonna have in zone, soft spots and Cole Franklin found it, spotted up and did not disappoint with that shot. Now a one point game with 2.30 to go. Just a bomb at the end of the shot clock and it went down. Rasheed Jones, Elliott, Banks, Jones, good! Huge threes from both teams. Rasheed Jones answers with a big three ball from the top of the key. 67-63, two minutes and 19 seconds to go in this overtime. The Raiders have exploded in OT. They have a huge shot right there and a, a good response after, after Cole Franklin had a wide open three. Another three and Rasheed Jones, 34% three-point shooter right there all net. What a shot there and now up four with 219 left. And the Raiders have to keep this energy going to, to ride this, this victory out in the sunset. And I want to talk about the ball movement on that last possession. You saw four or five hands touch that ball, and they were throwing it around the perimeter until they found a wide open shooter in Rasheed Jones, and he buried it. Looking for the best shot, and that's what you do when you're the number one team. You look for the best shot. There, there could be good shots, but great shots are better than good shots. And right there, Rasheed Jones really making Florida Southwestern pay. Rasheed Jones. We have a sub for Northwest Florida. Trey Brown subbed in for it looks like Tyrese Elliott now subbed out. So it's not over yet, though. The Buccaneers have fought all game to get back into it. They send it to overtime, and they're down four. Need a big one. The lob, the punch. And that's not just a jab. That's a haymaker there on the alley-oop. Baker and Evans Paul working the two-man game. They're abusing that 3-2 zone down low with those lobs all game. They've been doing it and in overtime. 67-65, a buck 38 left in this overtime period. Sumlin driving on Paul. Fell back, missed it. Was tipped around. Rasheed Jones controls. 20 on, fresh seconds on the shot clock. And on that tip, it was actually Tyrone Baker that kind of tipped it off, threw it back at the, the glass to try and get another shot at it, but ended up going in the Raiders, Raiders ball him. Simpkins in foul trouble, but in the game for the Raiders. They get it. Banks, the turnaround, fade, short. Rebound, Thomas. In transition, the Bucks. Five on four, Simpkins is down. Desdrick Lindsay had it blocked away. It's thrown. Wide open, Simpkins, dunk! Simpkins. 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 Simpkins punched it. Simpkins got, looks like, oh, he got fouled hard, but no foul was called on the other end. He was sitting down there in a huge jam to get the Raiders up four. 69-65, the Raiders, number one team in junior college. Holding on to a four point lead. Baker sizes up, air ball. Rebound, Tavion Banks. A four-point game here with 30 seconds. No fouls happening. I mean, you need a foul here if you're Southwestern, and there it is. So that call will be on Desdrick Lindsay. And heading to the line is Rasheed Jones. What an overtime period for Northwest Florida. With the, the lobs, the, the dunks. Deep three-pointers, really doing everything. And Rasheed Jones, who had that big three in the end of regulation, now on the line. Rasheed Jones on the one and one, makes the first one. That's a big one. 
Now puts this game at 72-65. Rasheed Jones has been huge in this OT period, defending, knocking down the open three ball. And here we go at the line, already one of one. Make it two of two, it drops. 71-65. The Buccaneers need to score, and they need to score quick. Thomas puts in the floater. Beautiful floater and a quick two which is gonna cause now Florida Southwestern to foul, and it's gonna be a free throws game from here on out. Uh, all all of Northwest, or Northwest Florida has to do is inbound this ball safely and then let Florida Southwestern foul them. 17.5 to go here, four points, Chris. I mean, it's been a, a magnificent first game here in the Juco shootout. Oh, it's been phenomenal, and I think you see just high high level intensity, high level effort, but high level talent as well. I mean, these kids are great basketball players, great athletes, and it's been a pleasure to be in the front row seat courtside with you, Brandon Ferguson and Chris King here on the Eastern Florida State College's YouTube channel watching the 2023 Junior College Shootout. And it's been a treat, 71-67. Huge thank you to Eastern Florida State College for allowing us to do this broadcast. And now we will head to our final 17 seconds of this overtime matchup between the number one ranked team in the country, the Northwest Full court Florida press State Raiders. And a click foul for Desrick Lindsay and the Florida Southwestern Buccaneers. And Brandon, you gotta be thinking uh, that four. Coach Eric Desert Murphy for the Florida Southwestern Bucks was telling the refs like, hey, we're going for a steal first, if possible. But that was a quick trigger foul call. Yeah, quick quick trigger on, well, I mean, put a, put a body into him, so you gotta, gotta call the foul on that. And these two free throws for, uh, excuse me, Tyrese Elliott, huge here, five point game, looking to push it to a six point game. Yeah, high-octane basketball, and that's what you're going to expect all weekend. And starting out this first game can't be a better example of that. High-octane, high-energy defense and offense. you got to love it. got to love a full-court press, half-court press. Missed the second one. Elliott did, and the rebound. Here's Thomas, a three. Short. The tip-in is good. They say it was over the cylinder. Tyrone Baker skied in as well as Evans Paul. Looks like Evans Paul had the original tip in and I don't think if Tyron Baker would not have touched that, I think it, it would have won, it would have counted and went in. But they kind of double, double put back and ended up getting called an offensive interference and that's a tough break for Florida Southwestern here with 8.8 .8 to go, down five. Thomas had a wide open three at the top of the key and just ended up missing it. And the tip in was it called a goal 10 on an offense. So it'll be five point game with five seconds to go. And this may do it if two free throws are made here from Jamal Sumlin, the Cleveland, Ohio native and UTEP transfer. And you know what I've been so impressed with Brandon is just how many scoring options this Northwest Florida State team has. You've had multiple guys it, just in overtime alone get into that scoring column when you talk about Jamal, Sum, Jamal Sumlin, Taewon Simpkins, Rasheed Jones, Tyrese Elliott. And it's about guys who can create their, their, their own shot and create for the offense. And when you just go down their roster, Jamal Sumlin, Simpkins, Rasheed Jones, like those are, those are three players that can create your own shot. And also Tyrese Elliott, and I didn't even mention Tyrese Elliott and Tavion Banks. So they're going to Free call, throws. They're going to call a lane violation or is that a tech? Yeah, a technical foul they'll call. Call it on the Buccaneers of Florida Southwestern. Tavion Banks sending this game home here for Northwest Florida who play tomorrow at the noon, noon spot again in this Juco shootout tournament. Tavion Banks was huge. I mean, he came in to this overtime and knocked down two big mid-range jumpers, and he's really one of the reasons why the Raiders were able to jump out to a fast start. Yes, and 
throughout the whole game, and he dropped off a little bit there in the first half of the second half. But to really get that energy back at the end of the fourth quarter and follow through through overtime is huge. The three from Franklin is no good, and prevailing is the Northwest Florida State Raiders, 74 to 67 in an overtime thriller. Brandon Ferguson, Chris King on the call. It was a pleasure to be on this one for the Eastern Florida State College Junior College Shootout here in Melbourne, Florida. Now, once again, just great play from both sides of the ball. You had big play in the overtime from Florida Southwestern, but ultimately the Northwest Florida State Raiders by Tavion Banks. He hit two free throws to send it into overtime, and he scored the first four points of overtime to really get them going. And ultimately the Northwest, the number one ranked team, Northwest Florida Raiders prevailed against Florida Southwestern and we have another game up up next at 2 p.m. Once again, your final score was 74 to 67. Executive producer for today's broadcast has been Cody Harrington. Special thanks to Eastern Florida State's Sports Information Director Mike Parsons and Athletic Director Jeff Carr. Our next broadcast tips off at 2 o'clock. For our analyst, Brandon Ferguson, and our entire crew, I'm Chris King. Thank you so much for joining us. The 22nd Annual Florida College Men's Basketball Shootout is a presentation of Eastern Florida State College. Eastern Florida State College has a two-year aerospace technology degree. We are the only school in the state of Florida that offers this degree. The program is taught by industry professionals. All of the instructors are currently employed or previously employed at NASA. The program manager was part of NASA for 35 years. So you're not getting just somebody that has a degree that's teaching you stuff about aerospace. You're learning from people that actually worked in the aerospace field or currently working in the aerospace field. Hello and welcome back to Eastern Florida State College. We have a post game show for you right here. If Northwest Florida got the win over Florida Southwestern in overtime, 74 to 67, Skyler, this game was insane. I mean, at the end there, they, hold on, let's start off, let's, let's set the scene here. They had a 15-point lead at a 10-minute marker in the second half, and, and you got to tip your hat to the, the Florida Southwestern team. They played tough defense, they made tough buckets, and number zero, Tyrone Baker, clutch player. Uh, you know, it was a shame he couldn't hit that game-winning shot in regulation from the, from the corner, but a very clutch block, a very clutch steal. They just... You know, they had their opportunities, they just couldn't capitalize on them. The number one team took away the W. Yeah, you mentioned the 15-point lead blown. They went on a 10-0 run, then they went on an 8-0 run. Eventually almost got it in the regulation, but wasn't able to do so. And then on the Northwest Florida side, they went into that into the overtime with four points, four quick points from Tavion Banks. What did you see from him? I mean, 24 on his jerseys <laughs> for a reason, right? He, uh, in, the, in the post, uh, the post fade going away from the bucket, I mean, tough buckets right there, a tough four points. And, and that's what it comes down to sometimes. When you open that period up, big time players make big time plays and the number one team was not short of that. And we mentioned earlier, the two, the three times before this game that those two teams had faced off, it was decided by one bucket. But this time it was decided by multiple buckets. And that just shows just how great of a game this was between a number one ranked team and an unranked team at Florida Southwestern. Unranked or not, and at any given moment on any given Saturday, any team can pull up and beat you, especially in a neutral site. When you don't have the home fans to cheer you on the back, uh, you're really just, it, it, it's, it's pure hooping at its finest. You're a neutral site. The playing level is, is fair. And I just felt that North, uh, Northwestern, again, sh probably should have won this game by more. But, again, my hat's off to uh, Florida Southwestern. They played a, a, a very good game. A very great game indeed. We saw a lot of defense in the first half and then a lot more scoring in the second half. Don't go anywhere. We have another game for you. Warming up right behind us. It'll be in a couple minutes. Pre-game show after the break. That'll be Eastern Florida State College, the home team against Gulf Coast State. For Skylar Blaine, Christian Erposa, we'll be back on the other side of the commercial.